Hello, my name is Jarko Vihriela and I work in Qt Company as Product Manager for Graphics and UI Areas. Today I'm here to talk to you about advanced 3D features that we have just released on the first week of May 2021 as part of the Qt 6.1 feature update. I find it strange to notice that some people say that Qt is not a good choice for modern application development. I wonder where that comes from, because a lot of the hot topics of today is something that we have had in our DNA for years, like declarative UI, cross-compilation, multi-platform support, just to name a few. We have not been marketing our 3D development story heavily, but we have actually invested quite a bit how to implement 3D applications with Qt. In Qt 5.15, we introduced our own 3D rendering engine, the Qt Quick 3D. In Qt 6.0, we introduced mechanism to merge 3D and 2D together and rendering, rendering abstraction layer, the rendering hardware interface that allows you to utilize Vulkan, Metal, OpenGL seamlessly. And now in Qt 6.1, we have rolled out some of really cool features that you should find interesting. But first, before going down to details, let's take a look what was done in our latest hackathon event when our own people got creative with Qt 6.1. All the things you're about to see here is something that was done in just 48 hours. Roll the tape! So this is the video compilation of some of the works what was, was, what was done in the hackathon. And some of the stuff you see here might not be available yet in the Qt, but most will be. Let's go. First of all, we have a kind of 3D Wayland compositor. And this is a spaceship where you travel inside. And as you can see from the control panels on the buttons, we actually merge the 2D and 3D content here. So you can see that the number was pressed. Then a screen opens where you have the hello world greeting. Then we have some particles. And this time there's a cheese flying around. This actually is a, our kind of 3D benchmark application, which now has interesting enough a kind of a flight simulator and a shooting game built in. This stuff was done by rendering the actual data from the kind of a geographic institute in Finland. So it kind of renders a real map. Then we have another game. This time there's a first person shooter with the multiplayer support. So you can see there's, you know, some basic reflections maybe. And then another guy. See that there's another player walking around, walking around. We don't have a real physics engine in Qt integrated, but these guys integrated one uh, available physics engine and you can see how the kind of car reacts when it kind of changes around. Then we have, uh, of course, you need to have one infinite space flying around. There. So let's go and see some of the technologies that this stuff was done with, and then you can start doing your own cool stuff with Qt. First on the series, we have morphing animations. This is a nice way to do smooth transitions from one mesh to another, and it's done in a really, really easy way on the QML side. The heavy lifting 
is actually done on the third party uh, modeling tool such as the Blender. And if we look at the code, you only have the morph target which defines the kind of associated key shape, then some attributes and then a weight whether you are fully on the on this uh, target model uh, target mesh or or not at all so it's really really simple to do and now we will go through some code example to see how it goes okay let's go through the morphing code so this is the morphing example and we have uh, removed some stuff so that it's easier to present how easy this actually is. So mainly the most of the magic happens in the 3D modeling tool, for example in the Blender, when you define those, those key shapes. And now in this QML what we do is just we define a morph target, a certain attributes and the weight, and then we tie that into the model here with the morph targets list and now, now we have only one, one here. And so, in practice it looks like this. So, now it's already kind of transformed from the base model and the first mesh to the kind of uh, other other mesh which we, which we have kind of defined and now we as we move the slider you will see that Qt actually transforms the view so that the object actually changes to a different mesh what is defined in the, in the project. So it's this simple. Just change from one place to another without any extra code. So for a developer this is really really handy feature. Next we take a look at instance rendering. This is a really cool feature if you're doing some let's say populating uh, areas with the objects. So you basically have your mesh and this is the kind of a root and then you just tell to the GPU that fill your scene with this stuff. And the QML type itself is really easy to use. So basically there's a set of properties which you can do so that it does variations to the object that is being rendered. You can change your color, you can change some uh, so position in, in the in the scene and uh, rotation of course and stuff like that. But let's take a look at the proper example how this uh, instancing really works. So I'm gonna open my Qt creator here and let's just resize it a bit. So Basically what we have done earlier here is that we have defined the instance in random instancing object here. We have done some variations to the position, scale, rotation and the color. And what we can do here is just you know show what happens if the instance is only one. Well, not too savvy is it? So what we want to do is we want to change this to, let's say, 100. Okay, not too bad. Uh, let's put 10,000 for the sake of it. Save. Hmm, I think it's a bit too much, at least for, my, for the GPU on my Mac. So the hardware resources might come into the play, but 1000 might be good enough. So then I want to do, instead of having the white and gray, I want to do red, maybe blue. 
And then I'm going to change the proportional to false, which means that there's going to be some other colors there as well. There! That's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? That was instance rendering. So, in Qt 5.15 we didn't have a real 3D particle system. We had something that you can use a kind of a 3D scene and app, introduce 2D particles and some shaders and kind of a create uh, something that looks like it, but it requires a lot of heavy lifting on the, on the code and, and so on. So we wanted to implement a real 3D particle system. And for example, if you are implementing realistic um, weather effects, this is a kind of a must-have. And for all that kind of a cool eye candy, this is really important feature. The core of the 3D particle system is the QML type particle system 3D. And what you do here is you kind of build the structure in your uh, view 3D element. You can have different kind of emitters, you can have particle emitters, sprite particle 3D and so on. And then the kind of a system itself controls whether the particle effect is running or not. And inside one view 3D you can have multiple different particle effects and uh, you can actually study this um, Q, uh, uh, particles test bed which we ship with the Q6.1 and and go from there but now let's do some live coding with the 3d particle system okay so let's do some live coding in the cute creator you will find a live coding tool called qml preview and by just opening it it runs the QML on a, on a kind of a separate application. This doesn't build the whole application if you have some C++ stuff there going on, but just, you know, the QML. So here's my kind of sample U3D based, based thing, having a kind of particle system already defined and some component which we use as our, as our particle. You can see something blinking, but it's not too visible. And what I want to do, I want to change the size first. Let's put it to 5.0 for the beginning. There it goes. And let's just, you know, throw it around, put some velocity into it. I'm going to use a vector direction 3D. And here we have direction, which is skewed vector 3D. I'm going on the y-axis. Let's put some variation while we are here. Okay, it should be throwing these cubes around. Um, but it doesn't look that nice. So I want to maybe start rotating this a bit. So I will do particle rotation and I use my cute vector 3D again and I go around like that. Okay, now they're a bit different shape. Let's do some more magic here. Particle rotation velocity variation as well. Okay, good. Now I want to do some lifespan for it, let's say 1000. 
last a bit longer. And I want to have more of these. Maybe 100 is enough. Okay, starts to be get quite colorful. Okay, um, but this is just, you know, boring, boring cube. So I want to change my uh, my image what we are using. And I can do it nicely with cute. I just add something into my default material. I say diffuse map. Define it as a texture. I'm just you know gonna use something which I already have in the project itself. Okay, there's my unicorns flying around. But this is just, you know, looks quite normal. If I want this to be really flying around, I want to introduce here gravity. And our gravity works also, you guessed it, with the uh, direction and I'm using vector 3D and then because it's gravity I need to introduce a magnitude. So there we go. Now we see unicorns flying all over the place. That was it. Thank you. So, there you have it. Those three were just brief examples what you can achieve with our Qt Quick 3D in the Qt 6.1 release. And all of those examples are really valuable source of information. And uh, you can find them from the documentation link See what that was shown. Or you go to your Qt Creator and click the examples and you see a lot of stuff here. But what you want to do here is you want to type in you want to type in quick 3D. And then you will see the examples which are here. They come with a good documentation and you can of course run them and, and study that stuff. Thank you. And now uh, there's some time for Q&A.